Welcome to Mark D. Maker. My name is Mark Taylor and today we're going to be doing wings. We're going to be putting in the details for the wings, all the feathers. Come on over to the workbench. Let's get started. So I wanted to show you this. This is before I actually sand this particular wing down. See the gouge marks here? They actually kind of look like feathers. So in some carvings, that's perfectly acceptable. It's not detailed exactly right, but it looks kind of like feathers. So I'm actually going to take the next step, sand them down like this one here, and we'll start to put in the details. So here the wing is sanded down. I just used a random orbital sander, 60 grit. It went pretty quick actually. And here are the patterns that I'm going to use. Now the, the book only has the front and back of one side of the wing. So to get the other side of the wing, you have to tape it to a window during daylight hours, trace it, and you'll have the reverse image or the other wing both inside, underside, and top. Now this is what the wing is going to look like when it's the patterns transferred. And the way I did it was I actually glued it down, but the problem with gluing down on a either a convex or a concave surface is your pattern's gonna come up a little short. Now I break the feathers down into groups like this, it just makes it easier. And if you see the the pattern will lay on top just fine. But if you mash it down into the curvature of the wing, you see how it comes up short on the very tips on either side? So if you're trying to be very accurate, you will take measurements and not glue your pattern down onto a curved surface. And what I did right here I'm pointing to is I actually added two feathers to the inside there. I made that work. I came up short and put the feathers there. Here I'm showing that I did a little V-cut on the legs here with the, between the feet. And that's just to guide my saw. I have a saw that I'm going to separate those feet later. So I'm separating the feather groups. Looks like I can pretty easily get away with. There's not a whole lot of shrinkage or, or uh, compensation I'll have to do at the top, but there is here at the bottom because of the curved shape of the wing. So I'm, I'm more concerned with the tips of the wing being lined up. Now, if you're, like I say, doing a competition carving, um, the, the people judging would catch that there's going to be too many feathers on the inside of the wing there. And you'd have to compensate by drawing your feathers either wider, more spread out, or make the wing shorter. In some competition, especially world uh, competition, the Ward World Championship, they have ornithologists. And, 
and they study birds, so they know birds, so you're not gonna trick them. Here I'm using just a glue stick. Do yourself a favor and get a good glue stick. I bought a cheap one and uh, was struggling with it. My main concern is getting the wing tips lined up. All right, well, I'm holding this in my hand. I do not recommend you do this. I'm just trying to get a good angle for the camera. Uh, have it down on a good solid base. Like I say, make make a, a sandbag out of a legs of the of a pair of jeans, and uh, that works wonders. It works really good to support and hold odd shaped things like a the wing or the body of an owl, any any kind of rounded object. It's uh, if you're carving on it, uh, it'll save your hands. Now I'm just cutting down, uh, not going real deep, um, just trying to make an impression in the wood so I'll be able to see it and do a little relief cut on it. I actually, what I like to do is make a cut, initial straight cut with, with the X-Acto knife and then follow it with a wood burner and the wood burner will just slide, almost like melt its way down into the slot. And you just pull it in, it'll stay right in the groove. Now you can hear the wood fibers slicing because that wing is much thinner now. It, it has much more resonance to it. You can really hear it. So here I'm trying to do a relief, just come at a, an angle and relieve some of the wood here, but I'm not having a very easy time on this particular wing. Uh, I guess I'm going against the grain or something, so I use my wood burner and it just follows that knife cut. Once you get it started, you just pull it right along and it makes a nice stop cut. Once that's in there, I'll be able to uh, use that throughout the whole carving process of this wing. Well, here I'm coming back again with a knife and still not having very much luck. So I, I moved to a little palm gouge. Now this is about a six or seven, number six or number seven sweep on this little palm gouge. Uh, and it 
it does the trick. It does beautifully. Uh, you can you can see the tip of it rides right along that burn line, and it works real nice. So it's a nice day out, so I'm going to head outside for a little bit, and here I tried to actually cut with my X-Acto knife the lines for the feathers, two groups, two feather groups at a time. You can see there's literally two rows there. Um, and it was a lot harder like that than if you take one row at a time. You simply have a nice cutting surface and, and cut the rows apart with an X-Acto knife. And then you can put them into place and, and do it like that. This was a lot harder. So uh, lesson learned. We'll speed up to uh, double speed here just for a little bit so you don't grow old watching me do this. But you can see I'm just taking my time and uh, it requires patience. So you want to relax and enjoy the process. Don't, don't try to rush through this. It will aggravate you you try to rush through it. Enjoy the process. So here we are, the lines slightly undercut with a burner. And now I'll take my palm gouge again, since that works so well with this particular wing. Trying it along here and and uh, and it's doing okay, but I'm I'm seeing some slight crushing happening, uh, and I just got this off a strop, so I'm gonna try a different approach and come at it like so, and that is it. That feels really good, slices right across the wood. And you can hear it as it hits the burn line. It, as the burn line is a, uh, a stop cut. And you can just listen to it and you can hear it. So we're stacking these just like shingles. It looks like one's just laying right on top of the other. Now you can see the grain is starting to change here and the wood sounding a little different.
Yep, it was just like little shingles stacked on top of one another. Time to get to sanding. So here we got a sanding stick. You can get these just about anywhere, Amazon, Woodcraft, any wood carving supply. Or you could make your own. You can use an emery board, do the same thing. But I bought this particular tool specifically for doing this job. Works out so nice. The smoother you can sand these, the easier the layout will go when you're laying out the wings and detailing them, burning in the detail. And that's what I'm gonna end up, end up doing is burning in each and every little quill and every little line on every feather here. The, I'm gonna make it seem a, Super realism is the is the term that some carvers use. I'm just showing the separation of the lay, uh, the feet here. I'll cut down most of the most of the way where the separation is, and I'll uh, use a carving knife for the rest. I'll Create a little separation there and start to think about how I want the feet posed during this carving. In my next video, I will be laying out the feathers for the chest and for the body of the bird and burning in the detail on the wings. And that is going to give you some wow factor right there when you burn in all these details. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.